There's nothing better when you're a cat breeder with five week old kittens after the end of a long day to get to bring your sweet litter into your bedroom and just spend some time just loving on them and socializing them. Now these four kittens have been uh, outside of their cage. Before when we were filming them, they were all um, up on the second floor. The penthouse apartment. Oh, look at you, you guys are going wild tonight. But formerly they were housed there. Well, obviously with all these antics, they've kind of outgrown that limited space. So um, I moved them down onto the floor. So Sunny's still up in her penthouse overlooking uh, the antics and going, goings on of uh, these four growing and, uh, <laughs> and uh, more cat-like kittens. So my husband and I just like to bring them in here uh, at the end of the day when it's quiet um, and there isn't a lot going on, just to spend time with them. We play with them, we kiss them, they snuggle up on our shoulders and our laps and um, we work with them um, to bring out that wonderful Burmese personality that everybody loves. They're so dog-like. They're not one bit afraid. You know, they just want to be with you all the time. And this just cracks me up. When, when they just act so cat-like, it's just this little, little teeny kitten, and they just start pouncing and carrying on just as if they were like some three-year-old tough cat. So we really have a, we really have a good time. So this is very typical. They love the pillows. They love climbing. I mean, they're cats, right? A lot of times they scale our headboard. They have their sharp little claws, which are going to need to be trimmed very soon. But you can hear them. And uh, mom just looks on calmly and they'll chase her tail. And But you can definitely see their personalities. I mean, this little red laurel birch is just going to be a ball of fun. And Calvin, it seems like uh, Vera Bradley over there is, is getting a little more tentative than I thought she was going to be. So she may be just a little more laid back. Oh, and the most laid back of all here is little sweet Coco Chanel. She doesn't leave, go too far from mom. She's the smallest. And uh, definitely the least adventuresome. Though every once in a while she feels her oats. And uh, we see her kitten and acting like her little kitten self up there. She goes, are you going to get your sister? Are you going to get her? Get her? Anyway, what could be cuter than a bunch of kittens? Okay, time to get mom's tail. Nope, nope, she's had enough of that. Get your sister. upstairs in the kitten room again and I just thought we'd check in on Sunny's litter. Now Sunny's litter is three and a half weeks old um, and they are getting so big. Uh, they're almost the size of, or a couple of them, are almost the size of peppermint litter here. Why don't you come take a look. Now they've really developed quite a bit since the last time we checked in. Um, as you can see, we have three sables, and although these guys have uh, lightish fur now, they will get to be just as dark and rich as their mom, Sunny. Um, also, if you've noticed, their eyes are kind of a blue-gray, um, and that will not stay. All of these kittens will get beautiful yellow-gold eyes like Corduroy and sunny their parents um and uh, as i said these these light brown kittens here will turn into this beautiful sable 
And this little girl, I have decided, is a platinum. She is just way too light in color to be a champagne. So, Sunny, you, I just never know. I just never know what I'm going to get, do I? Those, those recessive genes have been hiding out. She's probably had eight kittens, and I've only ever had uh, champagne and... Uh, sable, even when bred to a platinum male. So I'm just tickled that she carries the, the gene for blue or uh, platinum. So this little girl is definitely um, a platinum, and you can see her her paws are kind of a lilac -y color, and that's how you know that she's blue. She's also got kind of lighter blue eyes that you can see. And sometimes when people have seen my videos or pictures, they've said, oh, I want a platinum girl with blue eyes. And I always smile and I say, oh, they're very cute, but unfortunately for a Burmese, they don't stay. They turn gold. But these guys are just getting so big. They're standing. Again, they don't really too, too interested in getting out of this little donut. Um, but I did find them all in the bottom last week. So I've actually moved them down there and I've moved Sunny's litter box up here because I don't want them falling through this hole here. And I still like her to have a separate litter level for her litter. So they are just adorable. And uh, at the end of the uh, video, we'll be announcing uh, their names. Are you adorable? So here are Peppermint's kittens. They are now just about, uh, how old are you guys, six weeks? Um, and this week was not such a great week here for them. Um, I noticed that a couple of them were throwing up a little bit, a little bit of milky throw up. And uh, then they really, uh, one of them really wasn't eating well. And I noticed their weight was starting to drop. And then the dreaded diarrhea um, showed up. So, um, you know, we've been watching them really, really closely. This is not something um, that's all that unusual. Of course, I'd prefer that my kittens were 100% healthy all the time. I mean, I'm sure you prefer that your kids are 100% healthy all the time. But unfortunately, when babies are first developing an immune system, they don't start out. You know, human babies, all babies do not start out with a good immune system. Now, obviously they get colostrum from, from nursing and that does give them some protection. But especially as they get out into the environment and they start to um, explore, and um, they start to try different things. They can get stomach upset just from the food. Sometimes the intestinal flora, you know, the good bacteria can get out of whack, causing a little bit of diarrhea. Um, other times there's just a virus that they get that mom's carrying. And you know, somebody, an adult cat with a normal healthy immune system is not going to be susceptible to that virus. However, when you have really tiny kittens that haven't had much interaction in the environment, just like babies that haven't had much interaction in the environment, um, they frequently come down um, with, with sneezing or, or diarrhea, and so we just treat them the best way that we can. Um, these guys have never been running a fever. I've been taking their temperature. I talked them, took them to the vet yesterday and he took all their temperatures he took all their weights he says they look good you know this one's a little dehydrated that's a little dehydrated and he said because it's a virus you know they're not running a temperature so he doesn't think it's bacterial we did a fecal the fecal came back negative um he said supportive therapy now, what supportive therapy means is that these guys are getting syringe fed multiple times a day. And then I also give them sub-Q fluids just to keep their, uh, keep them hydrated, make sure um, they don't get behind the eight ball. Because when you've got such a tiny, tiny, here, let me show you, she's only, she's barely 12 ounces. And when you have such a tiny, tiny baby, um, you have to be really careful that they don't dehydrate, um, because there's not a lot um, 
there's not a lot that you're working with when you're working with tiny babies. So they're looking great. As you can see, they're looking cute and perky. They're a little lethargic, which is why they're laying around. But this little girl is on my... Are you on my leg? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying not to show my bare feet. Oh, well. Okay, so let me show you what I do for supportive therapy. And so here I will take a uh, little red who's... Um, Laurel Birch and I've got here a nice syringe and what I give them is a Royal Canaan uh, recovery diet which is a high calorie uh, cat food it's very very palatable or easy for them to digest and then to make it uh, like a uh, into a liquid, I mix it with evaporated milk, and then I heat it up in the microwave so that um, so that it's more pleasant. And then I just go like this. I hold their little mouth, and they just I squirt in a little bit, and then they eat it. And I wait for them to swallow it. And you can see it's messy, um, so that's why I always use a towel um, to keep them clean, to keep me clean, um, to keep my counter clean. Yeah, she doesn't feel good. You know, I'm forcing her to eat, even though her tummy might be a little off. There you go, sweet one. But, you know, with the supportive therapy, they have been maintaining their weight. And um, hopefully in a little bit, their immune systems will kick in, will fight off the virus, and uh, they'll be healthier next time around because they'll have built up good antibodies. Are, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Okay, so that's basically what I do. Now, I, I generally give them five cc's, which is half of the syringe. This is a six, uh, 12 cc syringe. And I just do about halfway for each one of them every time I feed them. And I try to feed them about every three hours. Um, I'm not feeding them. Oops, that was messy. I'm not feeding them through the night um, because they're just not that critical. Um, I do give them some fluids at night. I lock them up tight with mom. Uh, hopefully they're nursing a little bit. I, I'm not really 100% sure. I haven't seen any of them nursing, but they do like to cover, cuddle and they like the, um, just the security of having your mom there. You know, when you're sick, there's nothing like having mom nearby to comfort you. All right, so, all right, so that's pretty good. I'm going to show you now how I do, um, let's see. Yeah, she's just, she's just a little dehydrated. So I have this syringe here. It's a 20 cc syringe and I've got it filled with lactated ringers um, that I got from my veterinarian. And again, I worked in a veterinary hospital as a veterinary assistant. Uh, so I'm familiar with giving sub-Q fluids. So I get a clean needle. And then I pull up the skin here and make like a little V on the point of her neck. Now this part of their neck, you know, you call it the scruff. And that's because there are, uh, there are very few nerves in this area. Now she might or might not, let's see. Yeah, see, she didn't even flinch. I have a nice small 20 gauge needle and I have nice warm fluids. Now sometimes... Yeah, as it fills up, it gets a little uncomfortable for her. And I'm going to give her about 10 cc's. That's half the syringe. Okay, there you go. And then because she's a little dehydrated, I just rub the spot where it was to close the hole made by the needle so that the water doesn't come spurting back out again. Sometimes if you have a dehydrated animal, it'll just kind of spurt back out. But you can see now she's got a little... A little pouch there where I put those 10 cc's in. But that's just going to keep her hydrated. That's going to keep her kidneys working well. Um, and just keep uh, her organs from being taxed in any negative way. So there you go. So that's pretty much it. Um, for what I've been doing with these kittens, obviously, um, I'd rather not be doing it. It's a lot of work. And um, I'm so much happier just watching them run around. But for now... We do what we got to do, don't we? Yeah? All right. Love you. Get better. Hi, welcome to the 
Kitten Room. Here I am with Sunny's four kittens. And I'm not sure if you remember, but um, last episode, I invited you to give suggestions for names for these kittens. And I'd like to announce the winners. So if you want to come in here and zoom in. I'd like to introduce you here. This is Maya as in Maya Angelou, we're going uh, with the theme of American poets. So this is Maya for the wonderful Maya Angelou. Well, you have some good singing pipes. You wanna eat some food? Okay, our other little girl here is, here she is. This is Emily Dickinson. Emily, you wanna look up? There she is, little Emily Dickinson. And blue over here is, or actually he's green. Now this is Edgar for Edgar Allan Poe. And last of all, we have Walt here for Walt Whitman, of course. So Walt, Edgar, Maya, and Emily. And as you can see, they're growing well, they're doing well. They're out of the kitten box, running around, having fun. Hi, are you saying hi to me? They've just started eating solid food um, and using the litter box. They're kind of messy so far. This is a messy litter. You guys are messy. You wanna play? But very, very cute, very fun at this age. We'll be bringing them, little wobbly, we'll be bringing them into uh, the other room to socialize them every night. But these guys are not scared of people at all. They're very friendly and they're just doing great. 